Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Megan Spear of Marketing Support Network. But first, let's hit the bullseye. Knowing who you want to reach and influence is an essential yet neglected part of marketing. Far too many companies fail to understand that who you market to is different than who you sell to. Who you market to is different than who you sell to. Employees and people who refer others to you are target audiences that you need to remember when creating your marketing programs. But it's more than that. Targeted marketing that hits the bullseye involves looking at your current customers and understanding how to segment them and looking at people who aren't buying and drilling that market down too. When you truly segment and drill down your target audiences, you can hit the bullseye with your marketing and keep current customers happy, bring in new customers, and improve your bottom line. And Megan's going to talk about how Marketing Support Network does that for a lot of their clients. But one example of a company that hits the bullseye is Poppin. Poppin. P-O-P-P-I-N. Poppin sells modern office furniture and colorful office supplies. Their slogan is work happy. I'm a fan and Mass Solutions offices look unique because of Poppin. So how do they hit the bullseye? Well, first, they immediately segment you if you go to their website or their social media outlets. And they segment by, are you shopping for yourself? Are you shopping for your business? Are you a designer? So they've immediately narrowed it down so they can give you the message you need. If you're shopping for yourself, that's completely different than if you're shopping for your business. And if you're a designer, they want to tell you something different because you're helping a business design how they should look. The second type of hitting the bullseye that they do is they break down various promotions at key times of year that are logical. And I used to joke in my marketing classes that I taught at a very young age and I was uh, in episode one. Megan talked about being humble or maybe being too confident or too cocky. Well, back then I might have been a little bit of the cocky or confident, but I used to say, marketing's logical. And I would rant this in my classes. Marketing's logical. Well, marketing is logical if it's done well. And what Poppin does is they target the back to school season because they can get college students, high school students, parents of kids, and they can also get schools. And so they have campaigns built around that. Sounds logical, sounds simple, but how many of you are doing that at your companies? They also use free stuff to track who wants what. So they'll ask questions like, what if your home could be tidied up for you? What if your home could be tidied up for you? How you ask the question matters. When we go and see that on the page, we're going to probably say, yeah, I'd like my home tidied up for me. And you click on that and they then track what your response was. Their messaging, the work happy slogan and tagline is tied back to these bright colors that they use throughout their site. And it's not even so much bright. It's just, do you ever try to find a bunch of white office furniture and stuff that's not from Ikea? And that's what we did. We wanted to have a different look with Mass Solutions. And then as Megan mentioned, they use live chat to make it easy to buy. And she described me. I'm the most impatient buyer. And so when I go to the Poppin site, immediately somebody pops up and asks me specific questions about what I'm doing. They know my track record and they make it easy to buy. And then they deliver what they promise. That's what hitting the bullseye is all about. And Poppin does it. The No BS Show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com, No BS. You can download a free book, and you have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Our guest today, as I said, is Megan Spear, Director of Digital Services at Marketing Support Network. She's a social media strategist who helps organizations build relationships with customers through engaging social media content. To recap, you started off telling us about your career and you had three great gigs in a row where you had the wherewithal to position yourself as able to help that company and create a new position. One at Eden Christian Academy, another one at the radio stations, Salem and Word, and then now with Marketing Support Network. Now let's talk more about Marketing Support Network and how you build the social media program for clients. You touched on it a little bit in episode one, but let's go fully into it 
pick a, a client, don't name them, but just pick an industry, someone that was small and they were reluctant to try social media and what marketing support network did for them and how you did it? Sure. I think for marketing support network as a whole, the thing that makes us different in the market is that some, a lot of people come along and they say, here's our package. Here's what you can buy. This is, this is it. Whereas whether we're talking about inbound calls, outbound calls or digital, our whole strategy or live chat. Yeah. Or live chat. <laughs> see, I, see, the, look, yeah, look at this. Yeah, digging the live chat. I should be working for marketing you support should. network. I got to get some hey, kind of commission, commission here. here. <laughs> um, our whole our whole model is to be able to come in and say, "Who is it you're trying to reach, and what is it that you want them to do?" Okay, let's craft a strategy around that. And so. I don't buy into the whole theory of you need to be everywhere on social all the time, because if you're trying to sell, you know, if you're trying to sell car insurance, for example, you don't need to be on Instagram talking to 14 year olds. This is not, it's mm -hmm. just not, it's That's not, not hitting help the bullseye. You. No, it, you don't need to be over on Snapchat. It's not, it's fine. You need to be on Facebook because the target market that you're trying to reach is there. And then we can do some drill down over on Twitter for you. So I think for us, the whole point behind what we do is to be able to say, where do you need to be? Who do you need to be talking to? And let's do social there and do it well. You don't have to be everywhere, but you have to be excellent where you are. And it, my team is probably so tired of hearing me say this because I say I it all it. the time. You don't have to be everywhere, but you have to be excellent where you are. And so what that's, that's our goal. We come up with where should you be? Who are you trying to talk to once you get there? And what can we say that's really going to push you over the edge. I actually learned this lesson when I was working at Word. I would find on their social media, right? It's Christian radio. So I would find these really great in-depth articles about worldview and how to, you know, how to live better and how to all of these different in-depth articles. And they would get nothing. And I would take a picture of a rainbow and I would put a Bible verse on it and it would go gangbusters. And I used to get really mad about like man, that's so shallow. And we, you know, I would kind of be a little judgy about the fact that everyone clung to that. But what I realized is their audience just wanted a way to share. This is who I am. This is what I think without having to, you know, necessarily without, without, having, without, to without, without having, having to think. think. Um, and so that's what we gave them. We gave them what they wanted and they shared it and their reach expanded. He, it just blew up. And that is what we've done with a number of our clients. I understand that if you're an insurance agent, we work with one here in Pittsburgh and I'll use them as an example. I understand that what you want to talk about all the time is insurance and why people should buy more insurance and have better coverage or whatever. But what you, ultimately who you're wanting to talk to is people who own homes and what those people care about is what they should be planting in their garden at this point and how to clean up for fall and you know the best tips to get rid of bugs or whatever it is. And so when we can come along and say, this is what we're going to talk about on social. We're going to talk about things that homeowners care about. And then they go in and share those things. Now their friends get to see your name because social media is not necessarily about coming along and saying, buy more insurance. It's about building relationships. And so if somebody consistently sees Megan Spear has shared fill in the blank insurance company's photo, when they're looking for new insurance, they're going to go check out fill in the blank because they've seen me share that repeatedly and they know it's a trusted source. It has that personal referral, but for people to share your content for people, you talked about it at the top of episode one, for people to share that content, it has to be worth sharing. It has to be a story worth telling. If it's a quick tip, if it's an article, if it's a five tips to do this, great. That's the kind of stuff that people share on social. So it has to take a step back and say, I understand that this is the message you really want to push. And if this was a billboard, that'd be great. But here's what we're going to do to build those relationships instead. Simplicity of message. It's our albatross working in marketing. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this room there, we have five people in the room today <laughs> that you can't see because Adam is going to eventually have this on YouTube and have us videotape the show. Uh, and we also have one of our two Shelbys and Brenna from Marketing Support Network. But everybody in this room, our albatross, is that simplicity of message is a simple concept but difficult to mm -hmm. convey. Talk about the challenge you have when you go to company A's, CEO of a small company, and you say, we're going to post stuff about this. And she says, but we don't. Do we don't that. Do we do that. this. <laughs> Talk about that because that's sure. a challenge Mass Solutions faces every day too. It is. Um, it's hard to get people to care about 
what you care about as the CEO, right? You want to sell stuff. You want to have more customers, more clients, whatever it is. But to be able to use social effectively to build that relationship, you have to start with what they care about. And so I'll go back to the insurance example. They don't care about insurance until they have to make a claim. (laughs) Then they want to know that they can trust you. But until then, they want to know that you're tied into the community. They want to know that you understand them as homeowners. And so for us as marketers to be able to say, what do you care about? (laughs) Let me start there is a definite switch. It's a paradigm shift for a lot of CEOs who just want to blast out their message. Um, So I think part of what we do I mean, we're talking about Twitter. You want to talk about simplicity of message. You've got 140 characters. Thankfully, Twitter has now given us, like, they don't count photos and links in the character count. So I have a little more room to work with, but you've got to be able to hone that message down and say, here's, here's your chunk for today. But you have to get behind the mind of the audience instead of just spitting out what the CEO wants to say. You talked earlier about credibility of you as a source, and and Mm -hmm. that's what I believe I have with my social outlets. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing that I've always noticed uh, with clients of ours is they use social, but yet they don't think of using social for their business the way they should yet. So when we say to them, hey, we want to do this on this medium and we want to make it so there's a trusted source and that they feel like they're getting valuable information, they still struggle with it. So talk about how in social, you kind of have to give rather than just make speeches. You have to give information. Absolutely. You know, we talked about it a little bit in the first episode where we're all used to broadcasting out our message. If you've been in the industry, if you've been in marketing for any length of time, you know how to write a good press release. You know what a good billboard looks like. You know how to design a good print ad. You know how to get your message out there, but it's a well-crafted message that just tells people what to do. Whereas I think the goal of social is to come along and educate and equip and inspire folks to be more connected to your brand so that they have that loyalty and to help build that. So, um, I think part of, I don't know, part of our goal in social media is always to keep that educate, encourage, equip, inspire those kind of things at the forefront because, and I'll talk, I'll use you as an example. You have your own personal Twitter brand. Mass Solutions has their own brand. Right. But people connect to you because you're a person. (laughs) It's a lot easier for a person to connect to a person. And social is just that it's people connecting to people. And so I think the big mistake a lot of folks make is trying to make their brand just a brand Uh uh, and keep everything on that very corporate level without really jumping in and saying, you know, I'm a person too. And this is my job. I'd love to build a relationship with you. So uh, either the brand itself is too corporate sounding. Um, and that's a mistake I see a lot of folks make. We want to make it be that personal interactive type kind of thing, or the CEOs themselves or the CMOs don't get involved on a personal level to really connect with people and utilize the relationships that are out there. And it's partially attributable to fear, sure, fear of making a mistake. Part of it's fear. And I'm sure part of it is, is time. Social does take time. Well, <laughs> it is a free they don't resource. See the val- they don't yeah. see the value in how in that time. That's the problem. Exactly. And then they're, they're, they won't admit this, but there's a fear of a mistake. Sure. So let's have some fun and let's talk about a couple of mediums. And you say how people use that medium so that a listener that should be using that medium for their business can learn how they might okay. market it. So let's yeah. say, let's take Twitter first. How do you think people use Twitter and give two or three ways and how can a business take advantage of that? Sure. I think, um, the example I use all the time is that on Facebook, we connect to people we know, friends, family, et cetera. On Twitter, we connect to people we wish we knew. (laughs) And so we follow, people are much more likely to follow brands and celebrities and people they heard speak at a conference. They're much more willing to talk about, or that's where they're going to get their news. They're going to see what's going on in the world and keep up. What percentage with, of people do you think go to Twitter to get their news? Ballpark. I'm not going to like, I'm not saying you have to quote a research, just your gut feel. I would, I would guess it's at least 30%. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then you take something, you know, the bachelorette finale was on last night and it was, my Twitter was blowing up. <laughs> So 
So here's people, right, who are connecting to other people all across the world that are watching the Bachelorette finale. They don't know each other, but conversations are happening around different things. And that's what happens with current events, too. You know, we don't necessarily know the people that we're talking to. They could be on the other side of the country. Uh-huh. But we're able to share those opinions. There's a whole network of people on Twitter that I talk to all, almost daily, if not weekly, that are all social media and digital media professionals from all over the world. I've never met any of them, but we have these conversations going about what's going on in the industry for best practice. So um, in terms of business, I think Twitter is very fast paced. So if you are, for example, in retail and you have different specials going on, or if you're a restaurant and you have different specials going on, Twitter's a really great medium for that. I think it's also really great. Uh, um, people are very willing to tag brands in their tweets. You know, Starbucks is an example. Southwest, actually, Southwest Airlines, I think, does an excellent job at it. They follow Twitter if, because if someone's going to complain, Twitter is normally where they go to do that. Uh-huh. Um, and so there's an excellent opportunity. If you are at all in an industry that relies on customer service <laughs> and your customer service reputation, you need to be on Twitter to understand what people are saying about you. I think a message that I try to get across to a lot of folks is just because you're not on a platform doesn't mean that people aren't talking about you there. So you may not have a Twitter account, (laughs) but that doesn't mean that people aren't on there either giving you compliments or giving you horrible complaints. You have to be there to know what's happening and what's being said about you. That's why I mentioned in my targeting uh, hit the bullseye, who you market to is different than who you sell to. There are Mm -hmm. a lot of people that maybe aren't actually even buying from you, but there's still someone you need to reach and influence because they talk about you or they can refer to you. Take the Twitter example and apply it to business to business, B2B. Is there still significant value for a B2B company to use Twitter and why? I think there is to be able to position yourself as the thought leader in whatever that industry is, right? If you're the person who's consistently staying up on the blogs and consistently staying up on the news articles about that industry and tweeting about that and giving people the news that they need, um, I think Twitter is an excellent way to position yourself as the leader as the go-to. So then you get things that are, Hey, would you come speak at this conference? Would you come be a a part of this symposium? And so it broadens your opportunities, um, that you may not have had otherwise. I also think the other thing that B2B does again, because it's so relational is being able to go in and see who else is in your area and what are they talking about and joining those conversations to kind of put yourself in the mix instead of trying to start a conversation by yourself (laughs) and I'll be out there as an Island to be able to really come in and say, okay, let's look at Pittsburgh and see what people are talking about. Let me get to be a part of that conversation and get my name known as an influencer in Pittsburgh so that when people are looking for an insurance agent or marketing services or whatever that is, they're already a part of that conversation. That's Megan Spear, digital marketing manager, leader at Marketing Support Network. I'm Dave Mastovich, and this is the No BS Marketing Show. The No BS Marketing Podcast with Dave Mastovich is brought to you by Mass Solutions. Put our three-step No BS process to work for you. Visit MassSolutions.biz today to take your marketing to another level. It's all about bold solutions, no BS. Let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn. Yeah. So... uh If you are in sales, there is nothing better. (laughs) Obviously, HR recruiting is going to be an important one for um, for LinkedIn. But the thing I think the opportunity that people miss a lot, especially if you are in a company that hires regularly, uh, a company that's growing, when someone is getting ready to have an interview with you, candidates nowadays are doing all of their homework and all of their research before they come in. So yes, they've looked at their web, at your website, but they've also looked at your LinkedIn, a couple of the profiles for your top leaders and also your business page. They've looked at your Facebook page. They've looked at your Twitter account. They want the whole impression of your company, not just the well-crafted message on your website. So I think it's important for folks to not neglect their personal presence on LinkedIn, but also the brand presence, especially if you're in an industry that's hiring often. Um, most LinkedIn users, I would say, once they get a job, don't bother to look at LinkedIn very often. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, unless they're hiring or unless they're looking for another job. Um, so we tend to let things fall out of date or we don't update experience or job positions. Um, 
But then when someone goes to, if they're going to have an interview with you or they have a sales meeting with you, they're going to look at that impression. So making sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date is pretty important in terms of relationship building. I think that's a a huge point is what you just said about if someone's going to have a meeting with you, they're going to look at your LinkedIn, even if it's a meeting within a big company and you're at another branch and you're finally going to meet someone. So when people don't do the updating of the LinkedIn, it drives me crazy. And the Mm -hmm. second thing is when they don't put a picture. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And the, this the, goes back. And I said, it. I think in the first section, you don't have to be everywhere, but if you choose to be somewhere, commit to doing that well. Exactly. <laughs> put a photo on, don't be the little egg on Twitter. Don't have nothing on LinkedIn. Like, commit to doing it and doing it well. Something that I see with a lot of folks is that they'll use a picture from 20 years ago. Let's just be honest about who you are. <laughs> Right. Let's just be honest. Exactly. It's total BS. Just be yourself. I'm sorry that you're not 20 years younger, but that's okay. You have so much more experience to offer. Let let that stand out. So I think uh, we miss a lot of opportunity. I tell my students at IUP, no one can out you, you. Exactly. So be you. (laughs) I think, I mean, I've even gotten it. I'll be on a sales call with somebody and I get the notification that they're looking at my profile as soon as I'm on the phone with them on a cold call. So you never know. You got to have those things be up to date because anybody can check you out at any time. The other one is uh, I'll talk to CEOs and there's a lot of CEOs that listen to this show. We have a lot of CEO guests and C-suite people. And I hope they're hearing this part because they don't use LinkedIn as much as they should. And there's a couple of CEO friends of mine that have one or two connections. And the one is like a big time CEO and he has two connections and I'm one of them. And I kind of say, I'm very flattered <laughs> that one of your two connections, right, but that's absurd. <laughs> that's absurd. Like you said, don't do it then. Don't even right, go on LinkedIn Then don't even all. bother. It's yeah. crazy. So let's go back to, you've touched on a couple of times, but let's go back to Facebook because sure. there are these positive and negative feelings about pay- Facebook. There's the misperceptions of who's on Facebook. And I hear a lot of times the largest growth is with grandparents and so forth. Talk about Facebook and how a B2B company, because I want to stress B2B because B2C is a little bit easier to understand. The average person kind of knows I have to be on there about Doritos, as you said. But let's talk B2B and Facebook. But first, talk about how someone uses Facebook, what your feeling is of who the segments are that are using it the most, and then how a B2B company can leverage Facebook. Sure. I think statistically, you're correct. The largest growth opportunity, the largest growing population on Facebook right now is 60 and over. However, they're using it because their kids and grandkids are on there and they want to keep in touch with them. They're not using it for brand loyalty. They're not following, you know, their local plumber or the restaurant down the street. That's not why they're there. They're there to make sure that they can see photos of their grandkids. So in terms of a target market on there, that's just not how they use the platform. However, I would say 35 to 55 is the largest population of active users right now in terms of commenting, liking, sharing, really engaging with different pages. That is really the market. And especially within women who tend to naturally be more <laughs> social than men. So that is the market. 35 are you saying to 55. men are anti-social? Uh, you're maybe just not as willing to share. Let's, I would let's live with anti-social. Way. Yeah. I can, I can live with that description <laughs> of myself and my colleagues. But go ahead. Yeah. So in terms of really capturing an audience, 35 to 55 year old women, that's the key for Facebook right now. Now, just so happens that happens to be a large demographic for a lot of people. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's one that they want. It's a real key. So Facebook is a thing that cannot be ignored. I said earlier in the show, I think, um, no matter who you are at this point, you can't not have a Facebook page. You can't afford to not have one because regardless of what people are looking for, they're starting to use Facebook more and more as a search engine to find all sorts of services, to find the hours, to find the restaurants, to find the stores. You have to be there. It helps your search engine rankings for website searches, but people are using it as a search engine itself. So you can't afford to not do Facebook at this point. Okay. Let's go to a couple more. We'll just do a couple more because I want to hear uh, your description of Snapchat. And again, think in terms of business to business. And it's okay sure. to say maybe right now isn't the best time, yeah. but let's uh, let's talk Snapchat. I personally love Snapchat. Um, giant fan. But for a B2B right now, that's going to be a really hard one to make work. Um, we're seeing some really cool things happen 
B2C with um, geo filters, people putting special filters on whatever their location is. So whether that's, you know, I was at Chick-fil-A the other day and there was a Chick-fil-A one. I could <laughs> have my selfie with Chick-fil-A that had its own frame around mm -hmm. it. So there are some cool things that are happening in terms of, of geo filters. I was at a wedding the other day that had its own actually I wasn't at the wedding. I was downtown and apparently a wedding was happening around me somewhere that I could have put a Snapchat filter on. So <laughs> you never know. But so there are some really cool ways to put filters in there, to put frames around it. Um, I think it's great for B2C to tell a story. Um, I think there are some really, there are some brands doing some really cool things, showcasing how their products are being used. Uh, B2B, A, your target market's not there. Because right now it's about, it's 35 and under, I would say, is the, uh -huh. with high school and college being the main uh -huh. users. Um, not normally a B2B kind of audience. So I somehow managed to get basketball into many shows. Draymond Green mm -hmm. plays for the Golden State Warriors, and they lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron, which made me very happy. Oh, but see, Draymond, Green, Draymond Green uh, uses Snapchat. And how does this happen? He meant to post a private, very private, let's just say oh. a picture of a private area mm -hmm. of his. Mm -hmm. He right. meant to post it to to friends, but it went to, so to explain, is this, sure. what, what happened here? Oh yeah. So when you take a photo on Snapchat, you have an option to send it to your story, which can then be seen by anyone who follows you, or you can send it to an individual user. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, those things happen on the same screen. <laughs> Draymond um, Green's and had so, a bad year. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, it's an easy mistake to make because of the way that the screen is laid out. But that's just so sad for him. <laughs> that makes my day. It still doesn't match a guy named Wiener sending a picture when he right. was a congressman of his right. Wiener. But yeah. So that's Megan Spear of Marketing Support Network. We're going to take one more. Okay. One more social media outlet, and then we're going to go into your big idea, and you can talk about your team and so forth. Yeah. So Instagram, how can B two B use Instagram? Personally, I love Instagram because I think that it. Um, talk about cutting out the BS. Facebook has become a little overrun with politics and religion, and everybody's an economic expert at this point. <laughs> and Instagram has still, for the most part, managed to maintain. Slice of life. Here's what I'm doing today. Here's what's going on in my world. And so I think B2B gets a bad rep sometimes of being boring. You know, when we talk about business services or people that sell directly to other businesses, it kind of gets an, a bad rep. But people, you know, especially if you're talking about insurance or office supplies, ink and toner, those kind of things. <laughs> These are not like super exciting things. Exactly. But people connect to people. And people work at B2B companies. So if you're able to come behind and say, here's the story of what's happening. You know, here's our employees out on a community service project. Here's what we're doing. Hey, here's a really cool new product that we're at launching. And here's what it looks like. Um, and kind of give them a slice of life to the people that are in your company tends to be more a, a better way to connect to other companies because people connect to stories. They connect to things that make them feel. It is entirely possible for you to create a story around that. It does take a little more imagination uh -huh. to get people excited about ink and toner, for example, but <laughs> there are ways, you know, there are ways to do cool stuff about your business. You're passionate about your business or you wouldn't be in there. And so there are ways to take that passion and showcase why you love it and why it's important to you and be able to show people the heart behind a business that plays really well on Instagram. Megan, you're passionate about messaging mm -hmm. and you're passionate about social media. That's why you're on the show because this is the No BS Marketing Show. It's all about leadership, communication, and messaging. And I often talk about, uh, after reading Simon Sinek's book about asking why, I say that mm -hmm. when it comes to messaging, we have to understand both our why, which the Sinek book talked about, and that's book. our reason for being. But after yeah. reading that book, I was like, as a, as a CEO, I relate to that. I have to say the why of why Mass Solutions exists. But with our clients, they have to know their why, why they exist, their reason for being. But they have to know their second why, which is their customer's why or their reason for buying. And then you need to crystallize that into one common theme, one main memorable message. So whether it's for you personally or for Marketing Support Network, what's your big idea? So I think the thing that has always driven me, my why... Um, I exist in this business to help people tell their story. I am a people person through and through. If you take the Myers-Briggs, I'm a classic ENFP. 
I am just people and their stories and I want to hear all of those Uh things. And so to be able to sit down with somebody and say, tell me why you do what you do. Tell me what drives you and what your passion is. Okay. Now tell me what the problem is in your marketing. All right. Let me help you fix this. Uh (laughs) We can do that through social. We can do it through call, whatever it is, live chat. Um, So for me to be able to have a job where I can sit down and listen to folks, understand their story and their passion and be able to tell that better that's a dream job for me. Love it. So that's my why is because I'm passionate about helping people tell their story better <laughs> or get their story out there in the first place. And so I think for me, Marketing Support Network is a fantastic fit because it's solution focused. It's not here's our seven packages fit into one of these boxes. It's what's the challenge? All right, let us help you find a solution for that. And so whether that is inbound communication, outbound communication, digital, it's all solution focused, problem solving, listening to people, building those relationships and being able to help their specific situation. So for me to be able to come behind people and help move them forward, that's my big why. Talk about your team. I love my team. They're great. (laughs) Brenda's here with me. Um, So I have three digital content creators that do uh, website maintenance, blog work, uh, email marketing, email newsletters, and daily social media content. But then I also work with a team in the inbound call center that does all of the social media response. You can put great content out all the time, but if someone responds to it and you ignore them, (laughs) well, it's not really going very far Uh in relationship building. So Uh we take the response piece really seriously. So it's fun to work with two teams in that regard. Um, but I think each person on my team brings a different skill set. You know, Matt's very analytical and loves to look at the reports and see what the data says because social can give you a ton of data about your audience. And Matt's really great at looking at that and saying, okay, well, because of this, we need to course correct and let's try doing this more or we're not doing that again. Uh Um, Brennan and Emily have great design skills. Uh, they're really creative in terms of thinking outside the box and making it very visually appealing and making sure that the copy matches all of that. They're very creative individuals. So it's fun to watch them work together because they're all very different. But um, yeah, I I am thrilled with the team that I have built. I've seen a lot of the stuff you guys do and I, I uh, really concur with your point. I think it was in episode one about how you used the example of all this stuff was on the one social site for one of your companies and you put an image and a sentence and it got so much more mm-hmm. traction. Talk about how that imagery makes a big difference. Something as simple as just being color behind the words. Sure. Absolutely. And it all of that is part of your brand, right? So a lot of people sit down and they figure out, okay, this is our brand and these are our colors and these are our logos and and this is what we're going to do. And these are the the words that we're going to use to describe that. And then they put stuff on social that looks nothing like that. Or they use photos on social of all folks who are 15 to 20 years old and their target market is 55 and over. So all of those images and who you want to capture all play hand in hand. So I think our team does a really great job at figuring out who the market is. If we're trying to appeal to moms, we're going to find photos of moms with kids <laughs> and not use, you know, just photos of grandparents. You got to figure out exactly what that image should look like. So people tend to grab the first photo they see on Google images, which is probably not something you have the copyright to use anyway, <laughs> and then stick it up there and assume that it's going to do the job. But there's really a lot of thought that goes into what does this say about our brand? Does it match the image that we're trying to present in the whole big picture and how are we going to use that to kind of bring out the emotion that we want to draw into. Megan, pick a tool that will help our audience tell their story, craft their message or communicate to internal and external target audiences. It could be a tool like Google trends to generate content ideas. It could be your favorite blog or productivity resource, whatever you think might help our listeners. Hmm. Um, I would say productivity wise, I'm a giant fan of Asana. We talked in the first show about over communicating and making sure that people know what's going on. Um, for us, it's been a good tool to be able to lay out all the tasks that we have for each of our clients. Some of our clients get five Facebook posts a day or 10 tweets a day. Some of them get two tweets a day and one Facebook post. And so to be able to track how many we've made, how many we have left to go this week, (laughs) who's doing what I think, uh, let's everybody be on the same page. I can look at it on my phone and see what my team is doing while I'm out on the road. Everybody's kind of, um, across the same 
platform. Everything's organized in one place. They can do it on their phone. They can do it online. It just keeps us all on track for what has to get done deadline wise. And is that only for content or could someone use it for project management? No, it's all project management. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We use a separate system for content, um, for content management and publishing, but Asana I think is great, especially if you have teams that work remotely. Um, we have some clients that uh, our, uh, most of our clients are not in Pittsburgh. So for us to be able to have <laughs> access to a shared Asana task where people can put things in, I think that's a really helpful one. We'll have it up on the show notes. Megan, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? Sure. Well, Marketing Support Network's website is a good way to find out more about the company as a whole, which is marketingsupportnetwork.com. Um, if you want to contact me personally, you can follow me on Twitter. It's Megan5580. It's Megan with an H. M-E-G-H-A-N-5580, uh, or my email address is on our website also. Megan, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show. Visit massolutions.biz slash bold solutions for show notes, plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Are you signed up for light reading? You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, visit massolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.